All right, guys. Thanks for joining us today. I am with Dan Orner from First Title and Tim O'Brien from Zipful Mortgage. And with everything going on in the world today, we thought we'd do a quick little Google Hangout hosted podcast just to kind of talk and ease concern because business is going on. We're excited. Things are happening. So without further ado, and just to make, um, make best use of your quarantining time, um, I'm going to introduce you to a couple guys. So first, Tim O'Brien, why don't you tell everybody who you are and, and what you do? Yeah. So thanks, Mike, for having, having me on and inviting me into this podcast. Uh, I'm Tim O'Brien, and I'm a mortgage broker, equity partner at Simple Capital. Uh, been in the business for 13 years and riding the storm just like everybody everybody else. Uh, but business is good and, and, and feeling good about uh, things moving forward. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thanks, Tim. Yeah. And Tim does a lot of our, uh, a lot, a lot of our business for our buyers. Uh, he's a great, great friend and, and colleague. And uh, I'll jump into Dan, Dan owner, who's the same uh, good buddy. We used to be office mates. He used to have the office suite directly next to us at our old building. But Dan, why don't you share with people who you are? Dan owner, uh, own first title. Uh, we've been in business longer than I really want to say <laughs> a long time. Love it. Really good. Good business. We're always seeing a lot of a lot of changes. So, um, but the, our company itself has been in existence for thirty years. Um, so we're here to please, and I think this is a very good uh, process to get people exposed to what we're talking about. Maybe word "exposed" is not a good word. Um, <laughs> so, so let's dive right into it. Yeah. Well, perfect. Perfect. Hey, thank you, Dan. So. Yeah, the reason we talked a couple of days ago, just we're getting a lot of client questions, just, client and just uh, observer questions, just about what's going on in the world today. And I thought it'd be good just to get you guys who are knee deep in all, everything that's going on, as are we, um, but just really to guide people. So I kind of want to start off with if you are under contract, you're hoping to close this week, next week, three weeks from now. Could you tell me what's going on, how you're handling things? I'll jump back at, at you, Dan, just because we talked a little bit about some of the protocols and precautions. But when it comes to the closing them itself, what are you seeing and doing out there right now with current people currently under construction or under a contract? Good. Uh, well, first of all, I think patience. Um, I mean, this is different. It's new for everyone. So, you know, I'm speaking for one of many title agencies. So when I'm talking today, I mean to be talking for all. Now, they didn't appoint me, but I think I know all this business pretty well. So it's, it's, it's different. Uh, it, it's it's a, a closing is typically by a time set anyway. But when you come in today in our offices, we do not set sellers and buyers in the same conference room. So we have different protocols. There's different things. I mean, we're in business because of the being thankful to our governor and our Department of, of Health that does look upon us as an essential industry in mortgage lending, real estate, and title. They have to have all three to make it work. And so it's it's just there are, we have an obligation by having that blessing to take the public and our employees safety number one. And so how, you know, we have to be careful, how are we exposing our people? And so, for example, things like uh, we'll do closings in our office. It's not because we don't want to come to your home or to a realtor's office. It's just because or a lender. We can we we wash down the closing rooms between every closing. That takes time. Um, and we have gloves and we have mask on order. So there's things like that. that and we, and we do maintain that strict six to eight feet difference um, for people. So. Uh, I mean, so those, these things just take more time. So we put sellers in one, one room and buyers in the other. Now we got a closer kind of going back and forth. And so the process, you might allow, you know, maybe an hour and a half to be safe for your closings. Now we're getting them set. We're getting them done. Uh, now, obviously you can't do as many closings in the same day because you're, you expanded your time frame. We usually figure about 40 minutes, maybe an hour. Now it's an you know, hour to two hours or an hour and a half. And then we also have them space so that not to take too much time, but we also have space so that people get out. Uh, we were not, we will not allow people to mingle. So, I mean, we're not trying to be control freaks, but we bring you in, we set you down into a closing room and then you don't leave outside of going to the bathroom. You don't leave until we make sure the walkway, the reception area, our receptionist area is closed. The chairs are removed or turn around backwards. So we mean to get people in, Keep them, keep them safe and then get them out. 
That's that, and that's perfect. I think it's probably a lot less small talk happening now with uh, with the closing. So I know that's one thing that slows them down anyway. So you get rid of that. But that, that's helpful. You even went to the extent to say that you guys have a piece of tape to let people know the threshold of where they should be oh. along those lines, which is a great, great idea just in case, just because we get a little bit overly excited, especially if we're going to buy a house. So that's great. Yeah, I'll just say, I mean, there's, we have a, a stop sign <laughs> at the front door. The stop and our people will walk up and then and then you walk up to the next point. There's a piece of tape and there's on a table there are gloves and there's you know hand washer stuff and it's all right there, which we encourage people to wear the gloves. I was telling Mike earlier that I mean I thought you know, shoot gotta wear the gloves and, and and you know gotta wear the mask and and so today I was walking around different conference rooms. I would just stick my head in the door not to get too close to someone because uh, we don't want them to feel uncomfortable. And I said, hey, what do you think? Do you think we're taking the appropriate safeguards? I'm asking the, the buyers. And and the one couple said, yeah, yeah, all good. They didn't really have a whole lot of thought. And then the second couple, well, they work at hospitals. And I said, well, well, great. So what do you think? Have we taken the appropriate safeguards? And they just started laughing and said, we, we just think you're silly. <laughs> what, what, and then, then now, this is, now this is not advice. This is not legal advice. This is not medical advice. This is just <laughs> what these two people told me, husband and wife, they said, yeah, you know, the gloves, you might as well just throw them away. You know, <laughs> they make you know, drinking the gloves, they make you sweat, and that attracts germs. They say, just wash your hands. And they say, what about the mask? Well, now the mask, you know, the mask just makes you kind of sweat under there, and you get, you get more germs. The mask don't, doesn't protect you from other people. It just kind of keeps whatever you have right there with you. So it's like, geez, okay, you just burst my bubble. So we're constantly learning. That's that was practice right there, right? And we got to leave it to the attorney to say, "Hey, this is not legal advice." So I'm, <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect, Dan. Thank you. Now, now jumping over to Tim real quick. So obviously, to get to the closing table, you're the guy that's running the show with the loan processors and the underwriters. What's going on in that world right now um, with this, the timeline, and what what should people expect if they're under contract right now? Yeah, we're we're suggesting 45 to 60 days. Um, you know, there was a statistic on CNBC the other day when you compare uh, refi applications from March of 2019 to March of 2020, they're up 459% um, <laughs> year over year. And just being a boots on the ground guy in the industry, it, it feels that way. So we're suggesting 45 to 60 days. Um, you know, we've also had some requests from folks under contract about moving closing dates up. That's something that's gonna be difficult to do in this environment. There's just too many applications and just too, too much going on. So, you know, what we're telling buyers and telling agents is that, you know, whatever date you have in the original contract really needs to be the date that 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 we should keep just to just to keep everything on schedule and be sure that we're getting things done on time. That's, that's a good point. And, and I think one of you guys had mentioned patience, just with all of this, everybody's a little short staffed um, because, and people are working from home, which working from home, I don't know about you guys, but I have young kids at home. So when I, if I'm at home, my productivity may go down a little bit because uh, kids just are having fun. So that when we're in the office, we're working diligently and staying on things, but that goes for everybody across the state um, and really across the nation right now. And you, you don't know if your loan processor or underwriters in New York city or in California or where they are. So I think it's one big key is just being patient and try to keep, keep calm as best as possible and be respectful of others because we're all trying to get to the same objective here and try to work this stuff through. So I appreciate you guys both saying that because safety is the number one priority I think so we can all get through this as quickly as we possibly can, because the longer this drags out, um, the worse it'll hit everybody. But I think one thing that really just impresses me is the positive nature by everybody. Everybody's much more willing today than it seems in the past to, to work together, which is kind of fantastic. So maybe this is one thing we need not to go on a little uh, soapbox there, but it just it's nice to have everybody work together a little bit. So jumping into it, uh, Tim, I'll go back to you for a second. As, as far as if, if I have a client today that, hey, yes, they don't want to go out there and actively look at homes, but the perfect home comes on the market. Real estate, as is title and as is the mortgage business are essential businesses right now. They decide to go under contract on a house. What kind of advice? You mentioned the 45 to 60 day close. Is there anything else they should be thinking about as they're writing that offer, as they're moving forward? Yeah, well, um, really interest rates right now are, um, 
are low. We, we've seen some lenders um, actually increase rates a bit just to curb the volume. But part of the part of the beauty of our business is we're doing business with 25, 30 different lenders. And so we're seeing variances between products and interest rates more so than we've seen in the 12, 13 years I've been in the business. Mm -hmm. um, so really, you know, I'm having conversations with people about um, locking, not trying to play the market. Um, that's the biggest thing is, is, you know, some people, and understandably so, you want to get the best interest rate possible, but it's impossible to time the market. There's great products out there. And so I'm advising clients to lock. If we see interest rates continue to drop as we, as we get through this, um, there's always the ability to refinance. Mm -hmm. So just talking and coaching borrowers that, look, you're not going to time the market. There's great opportunities out there. Locking is the best way, in my opinion, um, when you're obtaining financing, you're not worrying about, you know, what are what are rates doing today? What are they doing tomorrow? Because, again, it's impossible to time. And that, that actually on, it was Sunday, I think, that the Fed lowered the rates. Or it was one day over the weekend or close yeah. to it. What, what, what does that mean for mortgage rates? Because I think a lot of people saw that and thought that rates were going to drop again. And you right. guys, I think your phone probably went out. Just because you got so oh, many, man. Tell me what that means a little bit, because even yeah. a knucklehead like myself uh, can get confused from time to time. Yes. So um, when the Fed drops rate, that refers to what's called the prime rate, and that's the index that banks use to um, buy and sell loans back to one another. It's not a direct correlation to mortgage rate, but what it does impact is if you have a home equity line of credit, uh, if you have credit card debt, revolving debt. You're going to see you're going to see drops in interest rates that you're paying, which is which is good for everyone. But we didn't see any movement really with interest rates, first mortgage rates, as a result of that. You know, you got some calls from people that said, "Hey, <laughs> does this does this mean I don't have to pay interest anymore?" And <laughs> and so <laughs> there's been a lot of confusion. There's been a lot of um, misinformation, just because, like Dan said earlier, I mean, we're all dealing with an unprecedented situation. Um, we're literally doing things on the fly. Changes are being made. Um, one thing, Mike, that I, I wanted to mention real quick is, is appraisals. Yes. Um, you know, we've seen Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac already making adjustments to how these appraisals are done. On um, refis, we're, we're doing drive-by appraisals now. The appraisers aren't doing walkthrough. And then with purchases, my understanding is that um, you're doing maybe virtual tours or taking, sometimes the agents are actually taking photos of the interior of the property. Um, so literally, I mean, things are changing by the day and it's just great that we're, we're, we're still getting deals done and, and, and people are still buying and selling. We're lucky this is happening in 2020 versus 25, 30 years ago when things yeah. <laughs> automated and, and electronic as they are. And I'll actually jump into that because Dan is a, is a tech guy with his, you know, his past life and software companies. How are you guys using technology, Dan, just from a, from a standpoint of closings? I know that the virtual close isn't necessarily here in Ohio yet. They're working on it in other states and they're working on it. I think approvals is probably one of the biggest issues along with notaries. But tell us how, how you're utilizing that a little bit just on closings. Let me uh, first say that, you know, I, I think when this all started happening, you know, we, we would hear the worst and then we would assume the worst. And, you know, but I'm still going to the grocery store or to get milk or to get this or to get that. Um, and so I, I would still think and I've learned now for me, you know, as long as I keep my social distancing, you know, I feel like I should be safe. So I would still want to go see the house if it's me. I mean, I, I with my appointment where the case might be, but I just want to walk through the house. So I would encourage folks to go out, enjoy yourself a little bit and, and walk the house. That's, that's so much fun right there. Right. Um, but with technology, you know, if it was a uh, maybe a year and a half down the road, um, by and large, you'd be doing your closings from your home. So with new laws that are passing and going throughout the country, and it just passed in Ohio this past year, but it's taken a while to get into effect. The point is, is through e-notarization, 
the big thing is not to get too specific, but because we all see e-documents, you know, from DocuSign to use them or give them a commercial or other vendors that you can send documents electronically and sign them. Well, the still thing is about we want to make sure that the document is, is authenticated. That's, that's why you use a notary for a deed and for a mortgage. Well, now we can have electronic notarization. So I can be sitting in my office right here and I can be watching Tim in Florida. And as long as, if it's Ohio property, I can notarize it. And then Tim can sign his closing documents in Florida and through, and I can notarize it that way. So even though it's legal, we're not really set up yet in our state. Uh, there's some of it happening in different parts of, uh, of the uh, country, but you know, probably this is really going to speed it up. I mean, we're going to see things now in months versus, you know, the latter part of the year. So I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing a lot of this within the next 60 days. And it's interesting because it's, it's events like this that actually spur new evolution and new technology to actually happen because we've known we've needed it. Um, but obviously there's issues because it's not just on a small scale adoption. It's a large scale and with laws and, and when it comes to title, I mean, that's, that's controlling the money and that's controlling the recording. There's so many very, very important pieces that that needs to be buttoned up. So a little regulation there is, it goes a long way just from a, a, yeah. a, a protection standpoint. So I think, I mean, as we go through this, we should probably thank a lot of people. I mean, first off, Tim and Dan, you guys have been busting your butt. You guys have people on your teams that are just working day and night to try to get this. I know we have people on our team that are doing the same. And then also down the city of Cincinnati and Warren County and Hamilton County, people that are passing off and getting the certificate, certificate of occupancies and new construction, um, signing off as the appraisers. I mean, there's so many people that real estate yep. relies on that it's, it's kind of incredible that this stuff is, is happening and happening on time. We just, we've had a couple closings with both of you guys over the past week or two that it's amazing that we're still hitting the timelines we had planned to hit. And that's a kudos to, to everybody involved. So I just, I got to say that a little bit because I know people are freaking out, but things are still happening and they're happening on the timeline that we intended them to be before COVID-19 or coronavirus, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, before that happens, so that's pre that's pretty damn incredible. Um, I just I just have to say that. And then of course, you know, while we're while we're talking about just being grateful, is we're we're lucky enough to be doing these things on businesses we do day in and day out. You look at nurses and doctors and and just the healthcare staff. That that's that's the real incredible incredible stuff. And it's funny because yeah. we're you know we look at masks for us in doing what we're doing, but really when you compare it to those people, that that's who really needs it. And anything anybody can do, just as a plug, to get more returned and donated to those uh, those groups and organizations and healthcare centers, please do. But sorry, I had to you know just go on that a little bit. I know we've all talked about it. But I think w w as we close up shop, I mean, is there anything you guys want to tell people just so they know as they're looking at homes, as they're in the midst of buying, or as they're just sitting on their couch listening to this because they got an extra 15 to 20 minutes on their hands in between episodes of Westworld or Ozark, which I think kicks off tonight or tomorrow. Uh, well, any advice you guys want to give to anybody? Tim, I'll start with you real quick. Yeah, um, there's 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 lots of liquidity in the market, which is great. Um, that's a question that I've I've gotten a lot. A question specifically: What's the difference between 2008 and what's going on right now? Banks have money. Banks want to make want to make deals. The Fed is going to unprecedented length to stimulate the economy. So, um, you know, my 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 if rates are low. I mean, this is a great time to be a buyer or seller. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just thankful for all of my clients. I'm thankful to you guys uh, for the business that we do together. And uh, just keep on keeping on. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Hey, well said, Joe Dirt. <laughs> uh, Dan, how about you? Anything? Uh, just a couple of things. Well, one, I'd like to borrow from, from you and thank, strangely enough, that our state legislature and governor, they just passed, the, I mean, they did this in like record time frame, passing some laws and now requiring, for example, the county offices to remain open. We can't do title searches. Uh, we can't do closings without doing title searches so that we know what we're insuring. And so we need to have those offices open. Also, when we close, then the new deed, the new mortgage, those things have to be recorded of record, so someone has to be there. So they're they're open or opening under limited, you know, there's few people can get in and get out, but at least that's that's workable. So that will slow things down. Now when you talk about slowdown, 
getting those titles turned around will slow things down. So, so I wanted to thank them for, for uh, doing that. And then I would ask for, for patience. Uh, the, because the closing process is still in many respects, still the same way it's always been for years, it's face to face. And so, you know, I, I, I'm sure we all love the military and appreciate them, which, which we do. And I gotta tell you, it's how many steps from that, but the people who were conducting closings from any title agency, I'm not trying to put them above anybody else, but I consider our, our people at the closings on the front lines. I mean, they're dealing with an unseen situation, an unseen disease, there's uncertainty, and yet they're there. I mean, I go to my offices and walk around with them and help greet. The point is they're there, they're, they're greeting people. And so my point in terms of patience is as long as we buyers and sellers come in, have a great attitude, we get to have a closing, you get to buy your house, you get yeah. to sell your house, move on to something else. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But we just do have more controls. And so if you just gonna be patient with us and kind of stand where we ask you to stand and sit where we ask you to sit and then let you sign away, we get you in and we'll get you out as fast as we possibly can. And God bless you. And thank you for your patience. And you're, you're absolutely right. And honestly, could there be a better time to move? I mean, we all have more time on our hands than we ever had before. So to organize and do all this, this is, as bad as this all in, let's look at the silver lining every once in a while. You can, I saw somebody posted the other day that they've had a chance to reorganize every cabinet and every closet they have in their house. It's, it's, it's amazing. Kind of the spring cleaning is coming a little bit early and everybody's going to get, get this stuff knocked out. So I think, you know, today's a beautiful day. We can be out, enjoy it, you know, soak up the weather the best we can, but thank you guys so much for, for taking the time to kind of educate myself, educate all of our listeners, um, the six or seven people that are out there that'll listen to us. Uh, I really appreciate you guys doing it. So Tim O'Brien from Zipful Mortgage, Dan owner from uh, the first title. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to your crews and thanks to everybody else out there working hard on this stuff. So we appreciate it. And um, hopefully we'll be back in a week or two to uh, maybe update everybody that things are calm and easy. So thanks guys. Right.